Welcome to Hack Doctor. We're a web security company focused on cleaning, repairing, and protecting websites. So if you have a site or a server and it's been fished and you're looking to solve the problem as quickly as possible, head over to our site and we can more often than not get the site fixed for you within the next hour or so. Or if you're not sure if you've been infected or not, simply comment below and let us know the suspicious files you're seeing on your server. We can then check them against our logs and then confirm if in fact they are malicious. In today's video, we're going to talk more about phishing and how hackers can hijack your website or server to do their dirty work for them. If a website or server under your direct control has fallen victim to a phishing script injection, you probably have a few questions. We're going to answer those questions by going step by step through the repair process. The steps we're going to follow are, first, we're going to understand what the hackers are trying to accomplish. Second, we're going to understand why hackers need to use your site or server. Third, we're going to examine the methods that hackers use to gain access to your site. And fourth, we're going to learn how to kick out the cyber criminals, clean your site, and close all backdoor access. But before we begin, let's quickly have a primer on what phishing is. Phishing is a form of deception where cyber criminals trick users into handing over sensitive information. Phishing attacks attempt to steal different types of information. Some of the more common things hackers are trying to steal are identities, user login information, banking credentials, or credit card details. There are different types of phishing strategies that cyber criminals use that range from generic phishing attempts, where the criminals use a cheap phishing kit downloaded from the dark web, and they try to cast a wide net hoping to hook as many unsuspecting victims as possible. There's also spear phishing, which is a type of attack that is targeted towards specific individuals and groups. And then there is even laser phishing, where hackers use bots to pretend to be specific individuals. Laser phishing uses AI to study an individual's online social interactions and behavior, so then they can talk like them and act like them, essentially hijacking the trust this individual has within their community to attack people who regularly communicate or transact with this person. However, if you've had your server infected with malicious phishing script, the hackers are likely just casting a wide net. So this hack falls into the first category of a general phishing hack. The way it works is like this. Using your server, they can send emails to people and then redirect them to a subdirectory on your site, which is designed to mimic a third-party website, such as a bank, social media platform, or an email account, to name only a few examples. Luckily for users, in the emails they send out, there are usually some red flags that would tip the average person off and let them know that this is a phishing email. For example, the hackers will generally use scare tactics to get the users to take action. For instance, the email might say something like, your account security has been breached and we need you to update your account information right away or your account will be locked. They use these techniques to scare users and create a sense of urgency. This is one of the biggest flags that users will see, but there are other things as well. So for example, usually these emails are very generic. Similarly, you'll often be able to spot a phishing email because there are spelling or grammar issues. And lastly, you can usually spot a phishing email by hovering over the link that the hackers want you to click on. It's vitally important not to click on the link, but if you hover over the link, you'll see that it will likely try to redirect you to a site that's not the site they're claiming to be. However, if a user isn't paying attention to the URL or the other flags and they click on the link, they'll often come face to face with a website which is designed to be an exact copy of the third party it's stealing trust from. If a user enters their details on this page, the private information is then sent directly to the hackers. So that's a brief overview of what phishing is. Unfortunately, it's gaining in popularity as a hacking method. We have more statistics about this on our blog, but research shows a 65% increase in phishing attacks over the last year. Similarly, 76% of businesses have reported being a victim of a phishing attack in the last year. And worst of all, 30% of phishing messages get opened and about 12% of people who open the email will click on the links contained within the email. But let's now jump in and talk about why hackers are using your website or your server to do the actual phishing. There are various reasons why hackers are using your site to fish user information. First, since hackers are playing a numbers game, they are going to come face to face with some pretty major technical roadblocks. Internet giants such as Google and all other major email providers and all ISPs have invested millions of dollars into protecting their users. They protect users in various ways, but one of the more common ways is through reputation management technology. If, for example, a user who uses Gmail receives a phishing email, that user can then report it to Google. Therefore, any new emails coming in from this IP address or email address can be blocked. This ensures that no other Gmail users will receive the same threat. 
So in order to get around this issue, hackers don't use only one website or only one email. Instead, they hijack the positive reputation of non-offending sites to bypass these reputation management security filters. So for example, a webmaster running an online art auction shop might have a sterling reputation. They have never sent spam or malicious files to any of their subscribers, so ISPs have no reason to block anything coming out of their server. Hackers, therefore, need access to this website for its positive reputation. Another reason that they use your server for their phishing attacks is because it's more anonymous to use a third-party site than to use their own site. So by using your server, well, now you're the bad guy, not them. And lastly, it's free. They don't need to pay for the server, the email sending service, or any other infrastructure. You're already paying for it all, so they just use your systems. The consequences to this happening to your website are huge. First, your host might decide to cancel your account. Hosts are often very strict when it comes to compromised websites. Even though you're actually a victim in this case as well, their view is often that, well, your site is under your direct control and management and it's your responsibility to protect your site from this happening in the first place. Their position is strict because if the hacker gains access to your site, the second thing they normally do once inside is attempt to upload an executable file. If this file runs successfully, the cyber criminals can hack not only your site, but all sites on this server. So hosts generally take the issue pretty seriously because you're putting other people at risk of having their websites hacked and their reputations damaged. Secondly, almost all search engines will ban your website and you'll be added to numerous blacklists. Likewise, browsers such as Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, and Chrome will all block your website from web surfers. And if you end up getting blacklisted, you can expect your site traffic to fall to nearly zero. So the consequences are huge. We have other material on our blog, which will walk you through the steps of getting your site off blacklist and relisted on Google. So head over to our blog if you need help with that. I'll provide a link in the show notes below. But let's continue discussing how the hackers gained access to your site. There are countless ways hackers enter a site to upload phishing scripts, but one of the most common methods is for hackers to exploit badly written code on your website, such as themes, plugins, or outdated WP core code. Um, once they identify the code vulnerability, they use SQL injection techniques that allow them to pass an extra SQL query, sometimes through online forms or login forms, contact forms, permitting them to add their own SQL query or modify an existing original query. Next, if their code is successfully injected into your system, the hackers will be able to gain access to valuable user data like username and password information. Then, of course, using this data, they can find ways to gain admin access to your site. This is why it's vitally important to always validate and sanitize all system inputs. Unfortunately, SQL injection is still one of the most common attack methods against web applications and has been on the list of the top 10 attack methods for over a decade. So now let's talk about how to repair the problem. Removing the hackers from your site and repairing the hack is where things start to get a little bit more complex. First, it's important to understand that hackers are playing a game of chess. They are always thinking three steps ahead. First, they know that you're going to be alerted at some point that your site has been hacked. For example, you might get a notice saying your site has been blacklisted from a search engine. If your site's hosting phishing script and you haven't been blacklisted already, consider yourself very lucky. Whether you've been blacklisted or not, you need to clean your site and repair the hack right away. To do this, you can use various site scanning tools. You can go to our website, for example, and run your website through our scanner. Again, I'll provide you with a link to that tool in the show notes below. You can also use Google Search Console. Simply verify your site through Search Console and then click on security issues in the sidebar. Any known malicious files will show up on that page. However, please note that automated scan technology will almost never catch all malicious files. That said, they will be able to catch the most obvious files and they'll help you greatly with your security due diligence. For example, one of the first things you should do when you find a malicious file on your site is examine the file's last modified date. All server files have this attribute, therefore you can zero in on your server logs from this date and time. This will help you identify when and how the hack occurred. Similarly, you should browse your server files and any other files with the last modified attribute matching the malicious files date should be thoroughly scanned. However, as previously stated, these automated tools have their limitations. They will almost always miss cleverly hidden files, encoded files, and backdoors. So for example, backdoors are these elusive pieces of code that hackers inject into your site which allow them to easily regain access even after the malicious files have been cleaned and your passwords have been changed. We see backdoors in the majority of phishing hacks. The sad truth is that hackers do not give up on a site that they've accessed very easily. Once inside, they quickly create a backdoor and they hide it so that they can regain access to your site whenever they want. So you need to clean all malicious files and backdoors and then find the root cause of the hack. Simply cleaning the files and closing the backdoors doesn't solve your problem because the hacker can simply regain access using the same methods they used the first time. Imagine having a sinking boat with a hole in it. 
if your strategy is to bail out the water but not to fix the hole, it's only going to be a matter of time before your boat's full of water again. To avoid this happening, you first need to analyze your server logs to look at how the hackers gained entry. Identify what weakness they exploited. No two website targets are the same and no two hackers are the same, so you need to manually and deeply scan everything to find the security hole, so then you can patch it. Next, you need to harden your site security. You need to ensure that your server is running updated versions of software such as Apache, cPanel, and PHP. You also need to update your passwords for all site access points. Update your passwords for your hosting client login, your cPanel, WHM, site databases, and even all site email addresses. You'll also need to install a web application firewall or WAP to protect against DDoS or brute force attacks. It also wouldn't hurt if you implemented a few common page rules to filter out known suspicious traffic activity. I also recommend you do things like ensure you have an SSL certificate installed and properly configured on your site, as well as activating 2FA for all admin logins. If you don't have experience cleaning or repairing websites or hardening web security, please head over to Hack Doctor to sign up for one of our comprehensive yet affordable cleaning and protection plans. In today's digital age, web security is a must-have, not a should-have service. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today. If you'd like to learn more about web security, head over to our blog to continue learning. I hope this video helps. Take care.